for science segment part two. Matt Sellen back with us this morning for our wise guy. Matt's it's getting colder outside, it's getting drier, and we're wondering about humidity today and how it changes with the season. Right, so I thought we could talk about that a little bit. Now, everybody knows there's humidity in the air, and what that really means is that there's water vapor, water that's in the gaseous form. And you know that's the case because if you just, <coughs> pardon me, if you just set a dish out on the table and you wait a while, and if it's dry, it'll be gone in a day or something like that, right? So it's evaporating into the air. Um, <coughs> the inverse process also happens where you have humidity in the air that actually condenses back into the liquid, but if it's drier, then you have more evaporation than condensation, and so you end up having that water going into the air. Sure. And so what, what nature really prefers is what's called equilibrium. That sure. is when those two things are equal, the amount of evaporation and condensation, and that determines how much um, moisture air can hold, if you want to call it that way. Mm -hmm. And so it's sort of interesting. So what happens is, uh, so what I've done here is I've, I've made these little shot glasses and I've written temperatures on them. So what you see here on at the very um, left one on the screen, that is how much air at 32 degrees Fahrenheit will hold. And this is air, when I talk about air, I mean one cubic meter, so sort of this by this by this, that much air okay. will hold this much moisture. It's about four, four and a half grams. At, at 45 degrees, which is what we have outside right now, the maximum you can hold, or what nature prefers, is about this much. At 70 degrees, it's about twice as much again, and at 90 degrees, it's about twice as much again. Sure. Okay. And this is what nature really wants to happen. Um, <coughs> so if the air has, for example, right now in this room, if the air had this much um, water in it per cubic meter, that would be 100% relative humidity. So relative humidity is what fraction of what it could hold is it actually holding. Okay. okay. And so what happens is if it's holding less than that, then things will tend to evaporate. And so if you have about 50% relative humidity, that means that uh, you, it's kind of comfortable. And what that means is that the water that's in your skin and so on evaporates a little bit, but not too fast and not too slow. If you have 100% relative humidity, you know it's muggy, you can't yeah. lose any water sticky. at all, you feel yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. If it's zero, then you feel kind of cold because s the water is evaporating very rapidly from your skin and it feels colder than it really is. That's why you want to keep your house at about 50% relative humidity in the winter. That's the comfort level. And actually, uh, it makes it feel much warmer if you have about 50% humidity in your house compared to, let's say, 10% relative humidity, which if you don't have a humidifier, you might have. Uh, it feels about 5 degrees colder if it's that much drier. Huh. So you can actually save a lot of money by having a humidifier because you can have your thermostat turned down and have the same level of comfort. Now, the reason your house is so uh, dry in the winter is that outside, suppose it's zero degrees, you only have this much water per cubic meter of air. Sure. Now, that air is going to get in your house. Your house is not like hermetically sealed or right. anything. Right, drafty. So that air comes in, suddenly in your house, it wants to have you know, this much, but it's only got this much, about a quarter. So suddenly, even if the air outside has 100% relative humidity, when it comes in your house and gets warmed up, it's suddenly down to 25%. And the air outside rarely has 100% relative humidity, mm -hmm. so it'll come in and it'll be very dry because it warms up. Okay. So the problem is that the air inside your house doesn't have all the moisture that it wants, and so it gets it from um, you know, evaporating from your skin, which makes you feel cold, or it gets it from um, wa drawing water out of the furniture, it makes your guitars go out of tune, <laughs> things like that, okay? And yeah. so, uh, so it's important to have about 50% relative humidity both in the winter and in the summer, just sort of for comfort. Is there a way you can test like what your right. house, how much humidity your house has yes. in it now? I'm sure, sure we have like 5%. Yeah, yeah, so you can, you can just get a little meter. So in fact, they're, they're super cheap nowadays. If you just go to really? the hardware store, you can get a thing that measures temperature and relative humidity and everything else. It's this little digital gadget and it'll, huh. you know, I have one at home that tells me what it is inside and outside. And I don't think it costs very much. So it's very easy to do this. And cool. can save on your electric bill if you're turning the thermostat down just because yeah. you have more humidity. And humidifiers are, are, are pretty cheap. You can just, this one that just evaporate water by blowing fan through a, a mesh that has a sort of wetness on it. So it's not that hard to do. Very cool. nice. Good tips, Matt. Thanks very much. Hey, we got more of the morning show right after this break.